Yes, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Bootcast Podcast. I am your host, Justin, and I'm already sweating my ass off. And I'm with my fellow co-host, Colby, who is basking in his AC right now. Colby, right. man. Comfortably inside, dude. I'm hey. sorry. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Knees feel a little bit better than the last podcast, so that's good. That's so, good. So uh, I think I should be able to play in our game tomorrow. I was going to say, how's your not water of the knee, water of the knee going? Uh, it's it's going well. It's going well. Just need a little bit of rest, I think. I think, uh, what was I doing? I was doing two indoors, one outdoor week. That was just too much. It was too that's, much that's caught up lot. with me. I'm too old. Too yeah. old for that. You are. Yeah. You are too old. Yeah. Um. All right, Colby. Well, speaking of old, so we've had this tradition going on since I think it was, did we start at number four? I think number four. Yeah. And so we're gonna we're kind of running out of players that we kind of care about. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna hit the reset button right now. New tradition. We're gonna start out. Colby, who is your favorite player who's ever worn the number one jersey? The number one jersey. Yeah. Oh, gosh. We're start all the way. Oh man. Uh, throw me for a loop here. The only one I can think of right now, and he is actually an excellent goalkeeper. I believe Allison wears. Dude, the number Allison one. is great. Yeah. It's such a goalkeeper number. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. But Allison's great, man. I can't stand Liverpool. Probably your best signing. Yeah. Dude is a monster. Yeah, I remember. So we, uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, the audience probably knows, but like saw the final of 2018 and Loris Karras, who had been a pretty decent goalkeeper the entire season, just collapsed in the UCL final. And uh, we had played, I believe, Roma that same stint. And so we'd already seen Allison, and I think we we scooped him up from Roma in that uh, that summer transfer window. So nice, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. He was a banger. That's a great purchase. I know. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with Edwin Vandesar. Okay. I, I probably should have picked Schmeichel just because of the the whole treble thing. But like, I was watching Vandesar whenever I was watching Prime United. You know, mm-hmm. Ronnie, Tevez, Rooney. Yeah, Vandersar was in the net. So did did Vandersar? Did he like? Uh, I don't know what you call it. Proceed, uh, Schmeichel. Like in that order, was there any like keepers in no, between no. there? It would have been super seed, right? Super, Pre- yeah, yeah, whichever. Yeah. No, you know? no, there was a couple. There's a couple stinkers in there, but no, no, no. Vandesar was a little bit later, but mm-hmm. yeah, very goalkeeper. I don't think he's underrated. I think people, like I said, it, it's kind of like he's one of your two toss ups. You know, some people say like Osh Michael was a better one. Some people say Vandesar. I yeah, Vandesar. So. Yeah, it is kind of cool to see uh, Peter Schmeichel now like interviewing his son like after oh, yeah. the uh, Denmark Euro games. I'm like, that's that's legit, man. Like that's that's how you know like you're a top level keeper. You have a son mm-hmm. who's a top level keeper like, for sure. Who's a Premier League winner because I believe he won with Leicester City, which Leicester. is freaking awesome. Oh yeah. yeah, and now he's playing. I don't remember where he's playing. He's playing somewhere. Yeah, else. I don't. Yeah, I don't ask me because I don't. <sighs> I don't know where he went after Leicester. I don't know why he left Leicester, but um, yeah, they. I think they. They collapsed and went down to the uh, championship, but yeah. but they're all, now they got promoted, so they're back up this next season. Uh, all right, yeah, they dominated. Okay, so let's get into this. There's some some new purchases between the two of us. There's some new news. There's some new leaks. There's some new everything. Um, let's start out with let, let's start out with Puma, man, because I feel like we don't really give them their flowers or their time to shine. Mm-hmm. You know, we, yeah. we we really like to kind of glaze uh adidas between the two of us so let's let's talk about puma man um we, what unisport put out that new video yeah yeah they put out the new video of the uh ultra i i want to keep wanting to insert the carbon in there but it's it's the ultra five no no carbon ultra five ultimate no carbon. ultimate I, I think it's yeah i think it's ultra five ultimate yeah yeah speaking puma in their in their names um yeah <laughs> it looks uh it looks like a, a nice ride man um i saw j mike's review looks like you get a little bit more nimbleness because the uh piece in the carbon boot that when you attach that um the upper mm-hmm. to the sole plate it's got like a little bulge there which makes it a little bit wider um so this takes that out because you don't need it obviously um gives you probably like a little bit you know more I want to say balanced stride. I mean, it's still a speed boot, obviously, but um, it looks a bit more, a bit more normal from you know, like our perspective. Yeah. Do, what did you think about the the sole plate? Because it's the same stud pattern and everything. It's just, I think, yeah, what, it's just plastic. Not yeah, it's right. plastic. Yeah, it's just plastic. Um, I still, I'm still wary. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> again, it's just, I feel bad saying this. It's just not a boot for me. I, I know there's a, t- a ton of people that watch this show who are obviously very big speed boot heads. No, uh, Baramir, I believe watches this, uh, podcast. If you're more, if, 
let me know if you are, I guess, more curious or interested about this boot if it does not have the carbon. I'd like to know like what real speed boot heads think of this. Yeah. Um, for me, I think that purple is actually pretty beautiful. That's mm-hmm. a really nice just looking boot. Um, I think the carbon I, I still want to really try. And I, I think that's why it's like this halo kind of – I just learned this term the other day. It's like their yeah. ultimate model. Um, I think that one just looks more interesting overall. But I definitely think that the the, the ultimate – I think that – okay. I think the carbon is going to be the cooler boot. I think the ultimate five is going to be probably the better boot overall. Does that make right. sense? Well, it's it's kind of like the um, – like you said, I, I like that term halo as well. I saw that on the uh, football boot hour. Go check those yeah. guys out. They're awesome. No, um, don't watch them because they ripped on me that whole podcast. <laughs> no, no, yeah, deserve, <laughs> deservedly so. Um, <laughs> but, um, again, it's, it's just saying like this is going to be, I guess, the more mainstream product because it is mm-hmm. going to be less expensive, probably more available. I'm sure they're going to make this in – a higher quantity if i had to guess just because the carbon model i would guess they're not going to make as many um yeah so i think uh it, it gets definitely an improvement over the previous ultra um it looks to be more comfortable the sizing on it is still a little bit weird i believe you might still have to go down half a size in this boot but um it's to to your preference uh, did you see this colorway in the carbon yet uh, no, I have not. Okay, so I'm wondering if the carbon is going to be every colorway or just maybe certain ones. If they want to not leave a bunch of carbons just hanging out on the shelf, I would just do it every so many. Yeah, that's how I feel. Or because either either the carbon is going to eat into this purchase or vice versa. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, because I think, well, you might have a crazy fast effect where I do think that when Adidas put that top tier crazy fast model out by, I want to say they released it in the fall and by like Black Friday, they were selling those things for like $100 off. Yeah. So let's... That's, uh, I'm really curious like... that since you bring that up, I wonder how that's going to work with Adidas and this new F50 because we've been talking about it. They have the laceless, the mm-hmm. regularly the plus and the women's elite right that's a lot of cannibalizing on your own product yeah and obviously i think the most popular version of that one is going to be like the f50 elite laced model so i think what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of women's boots hanging out you're going to see a lot of um laced models hanging out and then the higher end you might get some more if you're going to pick a lace less boot you'll probably go with the higher end option just because there's more Mm -hmm. features there um but yeah it'll be it'll be interesting to see what gets discounted and that'll kind of let us know what's not selling yeah it's i'm curious to see too because we didn't get we didn't get a chance to talk about it too much but with the f50 plus being laceless i'm really really wondering if the regular f50 laceless is going to even sell at all now because like it doesn't seem like the pred laceless is selling in any color way and i don't think that the crazy fast was was it um and the laceless i don't believe so you're talking about like yeah because they had the laced with the knit and then they had the the, the laceless top and the tier. plus yeah, yeah the plus so yeah i think uh i think we might see hopefully in the next generation either like a real slowdown of the laceless products or you know like kind of like what you're talking about with this um elite style boot from puma maybe we'll only see it in certain colorways and it won't be in in every single one yeah that'd be smart um, but yeah, definitely curious to try the Puma, uh, ultimate or what is it? Ultra series. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Ultra. We'll say the new, the newest ultra. I can't, I can't think. I of know, man. Things. Yeah. Okay. And so with Puma uh, on the point, I sent you a picture earlier. I think it was from at soccer camo. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a Japanese retailer. They have a new blackout pack and a new whiteout pack coming. What did you right. think? Uh, I thought it was gorgeous. I thought those, I wish they would do more of this. Like Puma, it's like they're known for their like outlandishly like, you know, colorways where it's, you know, so many, so many different like variations. And when they release something that's just a simple black, simple white, it's like, oh yeah, like I really like that. Like we saw the, uh, the Kings and the whiteout and that's yeah. like, okay. If I got a King, that's the one I would get. Yeah. that I think that that shows off that design way better than the, the Batman the looking Batman, Kings. Yeah. Yeah, I still like that colorway a lot. I think that the red Puma looks cool. But um, as an overall colorway, yeah, those white. And I thought even the black one looked really good with the like the spray painted looking on 
Mm -hmm. Power Stripe? I thought that looked sick. Yeah, I want to say when I looked up, when I translated uh, into English, it said they were limited. Limited, and it had a picture of black, white. So I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know if we'll even get them here in the U.S., but that would be... That would be such a good kind of fresh start from Puma. Like, here's yeah. our new Ultra model. Here's our new King model and colorways that you can actually enjoy. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that they make their way over to us. Do you miss their laser touches at all? Um, yes. Uh, I, Dude, I really wanted the... Um, there was a whiteout laser touch and the, um, the future model that was like... So the future Z model that was in between. I think you had the black version of this. And I, I wanted the, the white. I have the 1.3 in the black, and the 1.4 okay. has the white. Yeah, it was the 1.4 white uh -huh. version. I'll put it on the screen. And it had, like, the blue bottom. I really yeah. wanted that. But I had just bought the um, the first mile in the same type. Yeah, so I, that's right. And everybody yeah. was like, oh, the laser touch. Like, you can't really feel the Caleb. But, like, I still, I regret. That's a boot I regret not getting. Oh, uh, hold on. I got it right here. Uh, these ones? Yeah, so those are the 1.3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these were cool. This is yeah. probably like one of the first Puma models I've really enjoyed. Yeah, but and I'm, it's on a great sole plate, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I always like this sole plate, too. But you literally can't feel this leather. Like, you yeah, can't. That's, yeah, I think you told me that. That was like one of I our first conversations together. It might have been. Cause, yeah, because you were wearing the, the first mile, and I liked, mm -hmm. I liked both sets of the first mile packs. Yeah, yeah <clears> gorgeous <throat> boots. I kind of wish they'd go. That, see, that's – and if but, that wasn't even that long ago. Yeah, and see, that's what – well, the problem is it's leather. And Puma's not doing leather anymore. That's why I'm wondering if, if they would do like a K better version of their boots. But then it's like, yeah, that, is, that doesn't really make any sense either. Yeah, but if you've seen kind of what, um, like what Josh and J Mike both have said about the newest King, it's yes, it's like beefier K better, which I really enjoyed K better. Mm -hmm. But uh, according to at least Josh SR for you. He's saying like they're not even that comfortable. They're actually really tight. If you want a comfortable ride, you're gonna go with the um, the futures. Like you're not even gonna yeah. get the king. So like to me, it's like ugh, that's like the main. That's one of the main drivers of buying a leather boot or even something that's trying to be a synthetic leather is the comfort. So if you're not gonna give me the comfort, like I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting and crazy to me that the heritage lines aren't really pushing comfort anymore like they used to. Right. Yeah. That you know used I mean? to be huge. Yeah. yeah, and if anything, you're getting more comfort now out of the like so-called, I, I guess, more like control boot, sock boot. Like the Takelo is the most comfortable boot on the market right now. Oh yeah, for sure. But the four four two is kind of in its league of its own with the with the heritage right. boot stuff. Yeah, that's a good comfy boot as well. Um, but yeah, no, I I am I would that white pack if we get that more readily available. I might try those Kings. Yeah, because they no, look dope. They look dope. Yeah. Um, yeah, those look sick. Okay. Speaking of dope white packs, you have your Day Spark. They finally have officially kind of started hitting the yes, shelves. Yes, finally. It, so, do, you so think it's, do you think it's kind of weird that those didn't come out at the same time? Because we got the Dark Spark before we got the Day Spark. I mean, you don't release mm. Pokemon Red before you release Pokemon Blue. You know what I'm saying? You release them together. Yeah, that's true. But I also think that like if everybody wants Pokemon Blue... You sell Pokemon Red first, so they get it, and then it's uh, like, oh, here's Pokemon Blue, the one you really wanted. Yeah, and it's exactly. like, okay, let me get that one. Too. Suckers, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it definitely looks cleaner. I like the Day Spark. Is that's what it is, right? Day Spark. Day Spark, yeah. Okay, Day Spark. yeah. I like the Day Sparks better. I think that the F50 looks the best. Mm -hmm. I'm not loving the Pred. I don't know what it is about the Pred. Yeah, something's just not working for me. It just doesn't pop. I mean, when you go white gold, it it just it pops so much more than if you're doing black gold because like yeah. the black just overpowers everything else on the boot. Um, I love it, and and we were t we had been talking about this for a while. We talked about it with Noah in terms of like what the Pred was originally going for with all of their colorways and how it was like just make a simple colorway, mm -hmm. like on arguably the first like quote unquote normal colorway we saw was the Trent Alexander Arnold white red. Okay, yep. cool. Give us a colorway in white red. Okay, a thousand pairs, that's not enough. So to me, this Day Spark pack in the white gold is actually one of the first, like in my opinion, kind of normal colorways. There's no weird, you know, uh bright bright orange, like uh, you know, yellowy. It's it's just it's simple. It's yeah. it's perfect. There's no highlighter to it. Right. You know, that's why I always say, like, that's my biggest kind of issue with a lot of boots. Is it always looks like a highlighter pack. You know, somebody went crazy with highlighters. And I don't know. I don't know what it is about that gold. Like, it looks good, but just something on the Predator I don't love. 
maybe it's how they implemented the gold mm-hmm. just for me personally but i think the f50 like slaps yeah. Yeah. hard yes hard. it does yes yes that's what i'm gonna get actually is the um yeah the white the white and gold f50s and the like reds look good too that the the uh ft model looks very good to me but mm-hmm. not an see, og redhead this this colorway i think would have been perfect to put on the f50 plus yeah Woo! can you imagine that just mainly white some gold accents like instead of that orangish red that they have right that's gold the light strike pro is gold and then like the bottom is like a gold chrome yeah Fades i think that would have oh. sold yeah i would have sold like crazy yeah like, like i don't hot know cakes bro See, yeah but that's what we talked about these these brands are so weird about releasing like the the plain colorways like we call them mm-hmm. in all of it you know what i mean like why why is there no top end turf model in white and gold like let's be honest why i don't know i don't know um Oh well, since you brought it up, should we go ahead and transition into the turf models that we bought for this, sure. this pod? Go because, for it. You go first. All right, I have the messy version. Ooh, yeah, white and gold. Turf. White and gold, baby. Um, well, it's yeah, white, black, and gold. <laughs> but uh, no, I really appreciate the fact that because I don't want to call Nike out, but I don't think Nike would do this. They have put Hybrid Touch on. This is their this is their league model, so this isn't mm-hmm. even like their top pro turf model. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And they've actually put hybrid touch on this. Obviously, it's missing the grip elements you get with the FG model, yeah. but it is still so comfortable, so fantastic. Such a good, like almost like synthetic leather like feel on the ball. It's it's awesome. And you know what else they do, Justin? Is I bought my son a pair as well. Let's go. Yeah. And it's like and it's the same, dude. Like that's I I mean, do do you think do you think Nike would do something like this? If they made a special variation for, like, let's say, Cristiano or Mbappe, okay. would they put that same material on their, I guess, lower tier versions? Hmm. I don't know. That's hard because the only reason I say that is because the GT used to be flying it, right, with, like, texture. And then mm-hmm. the GX came. They made, uh, what is it? Gripnet. Gripnet. Okay. So now if you get the GX2 in a turf in the pro model, it's not gripping it. It's flying it with texture. So I wonder, like, if – I think Nike would, but I think, like, uh, it has to be old enough, like, technology. You know what okay. I mean? Like, Nike's not going to put it – it's not going to put grip knit right now on right. turfs. Like, it's just not going to do that. That's why they put the uh, the ACC on the pro model mm-hmm. to say, like, the hey, ACC. look, you're getting this uh, this technology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why <clears> – excuse me. The pro has fly knit ACC, which two generations ago we'd have been like, oh, my. Like, this is the best of the best. But now it's like, yeah, we got grip knit now. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And we'll, we'll get to grip knit in a little bit. But I just want to say one more thing about these, um, these messy – league turfs yeah of course they have this um on the pro model they have like this translucent bottom in the front so and this isn't light strike like so it doesn't say the little light strike That's here the and league I think, model right yeah so this is their yeah this is their league model okay but they've actually given you like this translucent front that they give you on the pro which is pretty yeah. cool like, That's so dope. so in a way like i so these are 90 these run at 95 dollars us mm-hmm. the pros are 140 so in a way i've almost got a more like higher quality boot, like I mean, and it's if you prefer, if you prefer the um, the hybrid touch, mm-hmm. but dude, I would I would want to play in this over the uh, pro turf model. So. Yeah, see, sometimes it's just better bang for your buck. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like oh, it's not the the differences aren't so high. We're like, do I want to pay an extra fifty dollars? Right, fifty bucks. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so mine, I did not spend the hundred and forty, but I got the Japan blue turf. <sighs> That's now. Dope. Okay, we're go- we're gonna we're gonna dress this elephant because I like this boot. Okay, I do. I, I really I played around in a little bit today. I love the colorway, but this is more purple ish. To it's like a blurple. What's the kind mm-hmm. of color? Yeah. And this is not red. This shit is orange. Okay. So for anybody in the comments, you're like Justin. It's it's red. <laughs> oh, it's it's a really intense red. Uh, no. This is orange, bro. Like highlighter. This is red. Yeah. This is no. This is orange. Okay. You could you could pull a footloose and just paint it yourself if you wanted yeah. to. Um. No, I would never do that to my boots. <laughs> He's so brave. He's so brave. Messing with his boots all the time. Yeah. But I played around in it. So far, it it is pretty stiff. The 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 um turf bottom stiff. Mm-hmm. The upper feels a little stiffer. Um. The heel is mega comfortable. I think this is okay. So I think that this is the pro FG. Okay. 
on a turf. Yeah. W- you know what I mean? How are so, the uh, how are the the grip elements on the medial part of the boot? Is it yeah, about the yeah. same as the outdoor model? Yeah, they're the exact same. Oh, that's like, awesome. They feel so good. All and right, they feel I great expect you to in. whip in some crosses to me tomorrow. You no excuses. Too much. Uh, <laughs> but now I have another bone I've got to pick with you. Okay? okay. And this is a personal attack, and I want you to know that. All right. Okay. I'll take it. Hit me. Okay. This tongue, bro, is ass. No. I hate no. how this. Come it like on. sits up, and it's so dumb looking. You're crazy, it, man. This tongue's it, stupid. Okay. It's so stupid. You 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 did it. But like anatomically, dude, this this tongue sits exactly where it should on your foot, and the lockdown is somehow excellent. Okay, when like, I play, this is what it kind of looks like on my foot. Like this is the best way I can it's like this. This is fucking yeah. dumb, Kobe. <sighs> this is so no. dumb. No, because you just put it inside of there. No. Whatever. Bro. It doesn't Whatever. reach. I can't tuck it. Like, if oh I could wear gosh. it like that, it'd be great. Oh, my gosh. You, you know what? You know why you don't like it is because your foot's too stable, and it gives you too much lockdown, and you can't handle it because you don't tie your last lace hole, and you just you I just even can't... have the last lace hole tied. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. That's impressive that's what I'm from saying, you. But it, it sucks, and I hate it. I, I wish it had the Velcro tongue. I would take a Velcro tongue on this. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Velcro. That's just, dude. I'm not it's, either, it's but. It's extra bulk, man. You're going to play better tomorrow. Just watch. I'm just not. watch. I'll have because you've, you've been wearing still. that. You've been wearing that bulky precision point one tongue. Oh you know? yeah. And tomorrow your your objectively your performance is gonna go up. I just I'm have, I know I'm it. I'm gonna have the headband. You know my hair's been growing back out. Oh yeah. I'm gonna Your headband for Fernando Torres. Yeah. Always. So, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wear one sleeve like Pogba. I'm gonna do it all. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna channel all all the pred gods. Go, into you're gonna me. go full Pogba. Just get a little <laughs> little little TRT. Oh yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. But yeah, no overall. Um, I'm actually super impressed with this, dude. Like, this is yeah. a cool boot. And I got it um, from Don's Dose on Instagram. He's a really cool dude that I've worked with a couple times. But, uh, yeah, he hooked it up, and I am I really do like these. So Yeah. Uh, well, so, speaking of the colorway, before, before we completely leave this topic in general, mm-hmm. because I have told you, I have, like, some kind of Tony Cruz style. Like, I, I can't play any mm-hmm. color that I'm not a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't a huge, huge fan of, like – the i guess like some of the elements of this messy boot right mm-hmm. so i actually went in i got some you know i like you know took my laces off my poor mizunos because that's all i had i know mizuno mm-hmm. laces aren't the best quality um but i changed it up a little bit and this okay. is just for me this is just a little a little added touch for me and so have you ever gotten a pair of boots where you were not a fan of the color but it was such a high quality boot that you had to get over it and, and keep wearing them yeah <gasps> Oh, reach. Technical difficulties. Uh, probably. Hold on. I'm going to take three boots. Okay, I got three. Okay, sorry. So these are my main three that I don't really love the colorway. Oh, yeah. Like, Ugh. this one is so... F- <laughs> this yeah. is the Pred Instinct Crazy Light. This one is just... It was so loud. It was so obnoxious. Yeah. Um, Very different. Not- but this is arguably one of my favorite boots of all time. Like I'd put mm-hmm. this in top ten, easy. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we'll go with we'll go with the Pogba accuracies. Okay, that one I actually like. It's pretty. A lot, it's a pretty cool like colorway. It, but again, I'm just, it's just a blue thing. You know yeah. me. Yeah. I don't love blue boots. Um, and then the last one is the T90 in this mm-hmm. silver, black, and yellow. Um, I just liked other colorways of this yeah. boot more than this one. Yeah, not a huge it's fan. It's not bad, but yeah. Not terrible, but this is one of my favorite boots, like the the um, silo, but not my favorite colorway. Yeah. Okay. Well, but yeah, cool. that's it. But you're 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 man enough to get over that and, and still play in them, which is yeah, yeah. I I like that. But there's certain ones like even if I love the boot, if I don't love the colorway, I won't buy it. Yeah, it's kind of it, like you've sold you've told me this before. It's one of those you look good, you feel good things, and if mm-hmm. you feel like you don't look good, it's hard to perform. Exactly. Like, yeah, if you're always aware of your boots, whether how they feel or if you're self-conscious how they look, it'll just – it's just that thing. It just plays that mental block. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Right, right. Well, hopefully tomorrow we'll look good and we'll feel good in our new turf boots. Yeah. Also, tell people about those um, those Joma tanks you bought. My tanks? <laughs> okay, look. All right. No, the new ones. The ones oh, that oh, look like skateboards. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I have a picture in. I have them in the other I have them in the other room. Yeah. So I told Justin, I was like, dude, I was like, my uh my Jomas, like I love them, but they have overstretched to the point where I can no longer wear them without my 
foot just going like this inside of the shoe. Mm -hmm. So I need to go, I need to go a half size down. I'd like some more stability like in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so I bought these, um, I believe they're called Joma FS Reactive. And I was was so excited. I got them in the mail. I put them on and I was like, bro, these are tanks, dude. Like I cannot wear these. Like they, they look like they're like golf shoes or something. Like I look like, uh, like Jordan's. Right, yeah, it would be like if you were trying to play in a pair of Jordans, which, like, obviously, I'm not the biggest fan of how boots taper at the toe, but you need some kind of, like, anatomical tapering so that you can get good ball control, like, in the front of your foot. Like, I don't understand. You can't play in a boot like this. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, those things... um I don't know what you were thinking buying those. To be honest, I don't. Colby. I didn't. I didn't. When know. you even sent me the picture of them, I'm like, "What the hell are those?" It's uh, this is funny because like obviously like we we are American, we live in the USA, and so if we want to buy boots that aren't the popular mainstream, we've got to go to YouTube. We've got to get the um, closed caption translator on because like mm-hmm. I'll go a lot of times to um, like the Asian market. If I want to look up um, certain turf style shoes, like Asics, um, I'll have to look up some like um, Spanish videos like for Joma. And so I'm trying to research all this based off the captions. So I don't know. It's hard to like exactly see how these are fitting people and their foot shapes. So yeah, sometimes you just got to order them. And uh, I was going to say, did anybody have a review of those? Yeah, there was a, uh, there's a Spanish dude that had a review and, um, he said they were. They said they were good. He was like, "Oh yeah, I like this." He was like, "It, it had." Uh, what's funny is it almost had like a tunnel tongue itself. It wasn't a tunnel huh. tongue, but it was one of those, like where you have two straps and it just holds the tongue together. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what these. That's a plus on these messy boots is they don't have the burrito tongue. They have the little tunnel tongue, which I appreciate. There you go. Look at yeah, you. The best. I was gonna say. I feel like if they had the burrito, you would have gotten rid of them. Yeah, I would have just looked at them like, nope. Yeah, I've been watching everybody's. Um, messy f50 review and i'm like oh that looks good looks good and they're like and then this burrito tongue and i'm like nah pass <laughs> our pass even james was like oh, i don't love it but he's like but it works really well in this boot yeah and i think you're right by the way i think that the messy boot is going to be the rotero of this generation of f50 and mm-hmm. it's kind of weird they got it out of the way so early but um if you like that old school hybrid touch feel it's it's such a good option i think all the fgs are mostly gone from what i can tell but if you play indoor and you want a touch like that just run out and grab these yeah save yeah. yourself under 100 bucks that's not bad yeah not bad um okay well I want to keep talking because I don't watch the Copa America at all. Like I don't what? care about no, I don't <sighs> care about any team over here. It's well, it's gonna be it's like more Brazil, soccer, Argentina. Dude. Yeah. Okay. Like let's be honest. That's probably or maybe Uruguay if they're feeling crazy. If yeah. But if, um. Oh no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say if if US if US don't you know they're they're not they're probably not gonna beat Uruguay tonight, but. Yeah, continue, my friend. No, that's okay. So, so that 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 tournament's been going on, and then the Euros has been going on in the morning, and that is, I think I've told, I might have said this on the podcast before. I know I tell everybody, but the Euros is my favorite tournament. Like mm-hmm. I like the Euros more than the World Cup. I like it more than Champions League, arguably. Like I love the Euros, and so two guys, one in each tournament that we've seen so far, are wearing the semi-release teased on their own Nike website, but mm-hmm. Mbappe and Vinny are both rocking the new Vapor 16s. Right. What are your thoughts? It's early. They look fantastic. Mbappe okay. had them on today versus mm-hmm. Belgium, mm-hmm. and they just they just look so good, dude. Aesthetically, it is like such a visually pleasing boot. I know some people had come out and said they look like American football cleats, that's exactly what I was going to say. I don't think so. I think they're just like they look just nimble enough to where they don't like when I watched uh, Mbappe on feet today, mm-hmm. they didn't they didn't look too bad. Um and there's actually this guy who was able to get uh them in hand like prior to everything. His name's um Eric Edwards. Edwards. Yeah, yeah I was just looking at up. Yeah, yeah, I watched uh, his review as well. It seems like there's a lot more grip knit than I thought there would be on the upper. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Which kind of, this is what I think. Obviously, I don't know anything. But it seems like it's going to give it that more um, GX2 style feel where you're getting a really grippy contact on the ball. I don't know how many players are, I mean, players that don't normally play in the GX2 
probably aren't going to be used to that. It is something that you're going to have to get used to. Mbappe looked totally fine with his performance today. Obviously, he's like the highest level professional. It's not going to affect him at all. But it will be interesting to see um, if people actually want that or not. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be as sticky as the GX2. Mm -hmm. I know some people say the GX1 is really sticky. I, I, I Maybe I'm just using GripNet wrong or I'm that bad. <laughs> But I just don't ever get that sense, like that yeah. stuck to my foot. When it, when they do get when they get dirtier, you don't feel it as much. When they're new, you can really is. feel it. But yeah, once you get some dirt <clears> on them, it's like the effects. I would say, like, yeah. go down a little bit. But I, I feel like that's what, what they're gonna trend more to is gonna be a little bit like a, a little bit grittier to the to the touch. But I think that mm -hmm. the whole thing that's gonna separate the mercurial from the phantom is gonna be those raised elements on top of that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like I feel like I feel like it's gonna be like if there's like a kind of like a a pendulum back and forth, and mm -hmm. it's gonna be like the GX2 is gonna be more like sticky and more about the grip, and then the mercurial side is gonna be like it's sticky, but it's gonna be more lightweight, more raw feeling on your feet. Yeah. So that's what I think the, like the main difference is. I think it's gonna be way more way more responsive, for sure. It, it has to be. Not that the GX2 is completely unresponsive, but. There is a lot more movement there. Yeah. Obviously, the sole plate's going to be 10 times better. Um, that's just that's the one thing you need to upgrade by the time we get to, to GX3. Um, but I will say it's kind of cool, and it's kind of cool to see the evolution of grip elements. Mm-hmm. Because even, um, I don't want to keep going back to this, but even on something like this old school, like hybrid touch material, when mm -hmm. I was playing around in these today, it's weird to not have that extra help. Like I felt like I had like a lot of sliding going on here. And it's like, oh, because everything modern has some type of like raised grip, something like even mm -hmm. on like the most basic, like even the tempos give you like the little bumps, you know, or, uh, or New Balance has like little raised elements on, um, you know, their boots. So it's just it's interesting. Yeah. I mean it's crazy because like I feel like in the mid two thousands is kind of when all those grip elements really were catching on and everybody was throwing rubber on everything. Mm -hmm. like grip, 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 grip. And then it kinda of started going away and everybody wanted like lighter, 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 lighter. And then now it's kind of going back into like, uh, let's give them some light grip. Right. You know what I mean? Some grip that's lightweight. Yeah, and it's it's funny because like you don't realize as it's going on, you know, it's just something you get used to. So you don't realize how much it's it's helping you perform. I'm sure, like, if you're a good player, you're a good player. Like, mm -hmm. boots aren't going to make you better if they have all the grip elements in the world. But uh, it is something to, like, kind of appreciate that we don't even think about anymore until you go back to something that's more old school. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I think that's what's kind of fun, too, is, like, you know, we, we always give all these brands so much, like, oh, that's marketing, you know, oh, that's this, that's that. And it's, like, even if it makes a point zero 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 one percent difference, like, yeah. at the end of the day, that, in a way, is tangible. It is um, measurable. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's just, like, even if it's just a, a mind thing for you, like, some people, like – like myself, they're like, oh, I feel like I can I can bend it a little better when I wear my Preds versus if I wear a Merc yeah. or something like that. So, yeah, yeah no, that is cool. And it yeah, is weird well, that we recognize things like that. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I remember uh, even when um, ACC came out, like around the Tampa Legend 4 era, and mm -hmm. uh, they were like, oh, yeah, when it's when it's wet outside, you know, you're going to – you're not going to get as much um, – like you're gonna get like a better like I guess grip on the ball, and I was like that's so cool. And I was like, but it's like the U.S., so anytime it rains, like games get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll never know. It's just pure mud. All that's... that mud is gonna cover it. Hell yeah. Oh god, and that's if it rains here in Texas. Um, but back back to the the boots. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I did think that. When he put those boots on feet, that Eric Edwardson guy, mm -hmm. that is the first moment. And I think it's just because of where the swoosh is. Mm -hmm. I think with having that smaller swoosh kind of right by the laces, I'm like, yeah, yeah, those do look very American. And maybe the colors too, the colorway that they use, the mm -hmm. white and blue. Um, I don't think it's bad by any stretch of the imagination. It just I, That was the first time I looked at America. Was like, yeah, yeah, they yeah, got to learn kind of from their – Yeah, they got to learn from their – what is it? Their hyper venom? Hyper vision? No. What is no, it? Phantom Vision. Vision. Phantom Vision. Vision, thank you. Yeah, Hi yeah. Phantom Vision, the, the mistake on there where it's just kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know what mm -hmm. what it is about that little swoosh in the wrong spots. Nah. But it, it's crazy because, like, you remember the Vapors 1 through 3 have the, sm the small swoosh yeah. on the side, and then on the 4 is when they started doing that big one, mm -hmm. and everybody hated that yeah, for the I longest time. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, the 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 vapors one through three were so cool because it had like that little swoosh, and then it had like the um, I'm trying to remember which one had like the three little weight. That was the wavy was, lines is the two, I think. Yeah, or is that the such three? a cool era, dude? That's such a cool era. I think that's like, the two. Yeah, so it does freak, freak people out, and I know, um, and I'm not sure if Nike did this on purpose, but it is interesting in a lot of their vapor lines how they will change it up about midway through the life cycle. So on mm-hmm. some boots, we'll have. Um, like I believe when they started the Vapor 15 this generation, it was like that um, that uh, Nike swoosh, and then they moved it onto the top part of the boot. And I think they did that with the um, whatever the white one was. They moved it over to the top, and then they did it in the, the peak. Uh, red. No, that was just the ready. Yeah, and then the previous model, I think it was the Vapor 14, where it went from being or was it the 13, where they went from like it being a swoosh to it being like a lightning bolt swoosh. Do you remember that? Uh, that's the. 13 on the 14 yeah. what was the 14 the 14 changed it to where it has this small swoosh on the side well, i remember the original 14 oh oh yeah yeah the four okay i'm just gonna get a different boot so the 14 was where it was like bigger right here and then kind of like almost went under the sole plate and then came up and oh, then okay. when they switched it midway they switched on that blueprint and it was just like the two little ones yeah yeah was it like one was forward one was backward was that i can't even remember but no it was almost like double like if, the, if it was like Th- oh, like yeah, uh, yeah. old school 3D, like double printed. Mm-hmm. That's how it was. That was yeah. the 14. The 13 is the one where I think it said mercurial all on the heel. It mm-hmm. was a regular swoosh, and then they switched it to the light, like the half off yeah. lightning bolt. I actually really like that half off lightning bolt. I thought that yeah, was very cool. Was cool too. That was one of the coolest things they did aesthetically. But um, yeah, that that being said, like so, even if you think that this Vapor 16 is going to look like a like American football cleat now. They'll probably mm-hmm. change it in a year to something oh, yeah. where they move the swoosh or do something different, oh, yeah. and it'll or, look or uh, some colorway will come out and it'll look drastically different. Right, right. Um, but yeah, I, so I know that you were a big fan of the um, Vapor Eights. Does this give yeah. you like obviously this has to give you those types of vibes? Mm. In what sense do you mean? Just like the uh, the white blue like aesthetics. Oh, you're talking about the colorway. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. It looks like that Vapor Eight. Yeah. Because whenever I think of Vapor 8, I always think of that, uh, what is it called? It's like the t- the Blue Lagoon, I think it's Blue Lagoon Mango. Yeah. Where it's like the, the bluish with the orange sushes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this definitely looks like that white blue. Yeah, Vapor and that 8. one also, I mean, so this uh, this soul plate is quite a bit different than some of the more recent soul plates that we've had. But mm-hmm. the Vapor 8 also kind of had a weird soul plate as well. Mm-hmm. And I saw somebody compare the fifth, I think it might have been the same guy. He compared the Vapor 15 outsole to the 16. Mm-hmm. And honestly, some of the stud shapes have changed, but it doesn't really look that different to me. Oh, really? No. Like, if you look at the stud placements, it's all in the exact same spot. Yeah. It's just kind of like that spine thing is a little different. It's just so jarring. Yeah, because I think it's instead of having, like, you know, those little like little X's or whatever, it's like these big, chunky-looking um, – I'd have to go look at it, but it's like yeah, I need four to that right video. here. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Very interesting yeah. stuff. I'm sure it's going to be it's it's going to sell like crazy. It's a vapor. It's a new vapor. For sure. Um it looks like on the inside was labeled as prototype, which which makes sense cuz um there's probably going to be like a more normalized colorway after this. Hopefully this one's not too limited, but it, again, it reminds me of when we saw that uh Tiempo prototype and we were like, "Okay, surely this was going to be the launch of this whole line so it looks like they're actually doing it right this time with the 16 yeah, yeah the prototype is the prototype right exactly yeah <laughs> yeah but uh no i am i'm hoping that it's a good one this might be it might be time to i think the 15 is a is a good uh mercurial but i think the 16 might be the one where i'm like let me give it a shot give it a shot man. let me give actually spend some money on a mercurial yeah what was the last uh what was the last murky actually wore like in play like oh uh, Superfly. I had the four. Oh, I had a Vapor Eleven. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Vapor Eleven. So like the little little lines on the yeah, yeah on yeah. the boot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, those are great. Um, those are the last ones I really wore because I didn't wear the the twelves or thirteen. Oh, I'm sorry. I did have the Ronaldo Spark Positivity fourteens that I wore for a game. Okay. And I literally wore them for half of a game and went, oh yeah. I don't wear mercurials, and right. I took them off. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't uh, worn mercurials for games 
since I tore my ACL. So. Yeah, I was going to say, with your knee swollen up the way, I think. Just <laughs> not, I don't have stay, water on the knee. Stay away, bro. I'm, <laughs> it's not like, I'm like dying. You're like, oh, sorry, you're gonna Colby. like You're going to like look at a mercurial in a shop and your knee's just like, <laughs> and you're just going to like fall over right there. I'm like, oh my God, Colby. Uh, no, because apparently the, uh, the speed boot community is getting, it's just getting interesting. Like, I feel yeah. like there's certain people who have worn speed boots for a very long time and they are not super happy about having speed boots being able to fit for all it's very i think like they yes. put it guys who like to go fast and they you know it's it's kind of like it's the opposite of what's happening with the tempo it's like all these like fat footed tempo guys like me who like leather it's like ah screw all y'all we're going a different direction i feel like that's <laughs> what they're doing to the speed boot guys but just the opposite okay so let's talk about this because i don't remember who it was that wanted to talk specifically about speed boots. Yeah, it might have been it might have been Bar Baramir, I think. Okay. Where where is your head? Do you want speed boots? Because they talked about this. I asked James uh and Andrew and Noah about this the other day. Do you want speed boots to trend kind of how they are, where it's like inclusive and really anyone <laughs> yeah, can yeah. kind of wear a speed boot, you know, to an extent? Or do you want to go do you want it to go back to like Mercurial Vapor 8, Vapor 9, you know, early F50 Addy Zeros, like early Evo Speeds where it's like thin, raw, like we're going to make this super light. We're going to make this super narrow. Like, let's go. Yeah. I'm going to give you a, uh, hopefully a good answer here. Yes, I want them to be more, quote unquote, inclusive with speed boots. And I'll tell you Mm -hmm. why. Because they have sort of killed heritage lines. Mm -hmm. And so you have left a lot of people like myself a little bit displaced. And so we're, we're out of our like leather comfort zone. We're trying new things. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I tried the newest F50 elite Mm -hmm. model, the men's version, I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like this is, this is a really cool alternative. I love the sole plate. I love how it's flat. Like I enjoy the upper. And so like, this is, this is a landing spot for me. Okay. Because I have been kind of, you know, I don't want to say I got I kicked out of my my tempos. I could still you know squeeze them on and and keep going, um, but it's just allowed me to kind of find alternative options. And so if you're going to, like like really taper down the leather and the king, the copa, and the uh, tempos, then like we're gonna need some place to go. Well, okay. So then my question to you is, what what's wrong with the phantom line then? The sole plate. Well, that, that's what I'm saying, though. If, if you want to talk about fit, is it's okay. like if, oh, okay. if, the, if the speed boots went super hardcore, so like let's say you have your Mercurials, and then your Phantoms are almost like Mercurials but wider. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's a good point. Are, are you okay with something like that? Because like you said, you're trying to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed I enjoyed the uh, the GX twos. Like there was there was honestly there's nothing wrong with them. They're more responsive than something like a Tequila. It's honestly just like for the love, my love of you know trying different boots, trying mm-hmm. the latest, the latest uh, boots, and so um, I think I hopped from the GX twos to the Prez. Really enjoyed the Prez. Really enjoyed the F fifties. Um, so it's yeah, I think I think that had man, that's a really that's a really good point you brought up. Um, yeah, I guess you could say that we heritage guys could come out of our like old school leather and go into more i guess control boots because they're a little bit more comfortable so you wouldn't need to widen out the speed boots yeah i don't know uh i I I don't think there's a right or wrong answer i'm just it's just one of those you know those thoughts i have where it's like you said like like whenever uh, the fourth silos all started dying out you know when Mm -hmm. everybody had the fourth one and it was dying out it's like well what boot do we put them in Right, and it's kind of like, well, what's what's the closest thing to them? So it's like a lot of those agility guys from Adidas went to speed boots, mm-hmm. you know. So I I'm just curious. That's all. I, I wait. I, agil- agility boots are gone. Yeah. Don't tell. Don't Whoa. tell James, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Oh my god. Also, the Gambit Track Soul Plate. I'm gonna say it here. Overrated. It's not Ugh. that good. No, James. James, I hope you hear. I hope you're listening, James. Boot wizard. <laughs> I see you. I see you calling me out. Okay. Your soul plate is doo doo butter. The reason that <laughs> the new messy boot doesn't have it is because it's not that good, James. I will say, like in I, I know people really enjoy the soul plate, but the new F fifty soul plate is it's so good, dude. It's such a good soul mm-hmm. plate. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, but yeah, yeah. That's uh, so that that intrigues me more than anything. I don't like. Obviously, companies are gonna make more money the more they widen the speed boot category out. So like, they're all for it. They don't care. They're not you know they're not looking out for you, the speed boot guy of fifteen years. They're no. looking to make a dollar. Exactly. And eventually, you're gonna be you're not gonna be a customer anymore. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like eventually, no matter who wears whatever type of boots, eventually those people get old and. Don't keep buying boots. Yeah, yeah. The Copa, the Copa Mundi, all guys, man. They're uh, they've got to be like in their they're 50s different. now. Yeah, they're, they're they're built different. They are built different. Yeah, no excuses. Right. So let's wrap off this this podcast because I think I'm about to have a heat stroke. Colby, I was talking about the Euros earlier, and you told me that you think that this tournament is very boring. I I don't think you even need to hear from me. I think it's very boring for a lot of people. Like how you can turn, uh, what was it, Dude. Um, France Belgium into a oh. like deflection goal for the France S- win? Smelly, with he, Mbappe, so smelly, Griezmann, bro. dude. Mbappe has been, been doo doo. He has been doo doo this tournament. He's got the mask, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's affecting mask his is, performance. He's doo doo. He's not impressed. No, to be honest, I don't really know if any. Well, there's one guy that's impressed me. There's one guy that's lived up to the hype, dude. Jude. Jude. Bicycle kick? Bicycle, yes. Last 30 seconds of a game? That was pretty cool. I mean, the 90 minutes leading up to that goal, or 94 minutes or whatever it was. Smelly. But, Smelly. But it stanks out there. Yeah. And England overall, man, I love them. I want them to win, but I'm just like, oh, my God. Now with this. Now with this man. Y'all are making dude. it so painful to watch. Yeah. And it's it's kind of ironic that you don't watch the uh, Copa America because I feel like those are so much more exciting. Right now, like it's they might be. There's a lot of flair. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is, man. I just don't care. I saw this meme, and it was uh, it was um, me watching the year. It was it was a picture of Shannon Sharp, and it was uh, me watching the Euros, and he's got like a nice like suit and tie on, and then it was like me watching the Copa America, and it's like him with like a uh, alcohol in his hand, and he's smoking. <laughs> I was like, yes, dude. that's awesome. That's like the perfect picture of no, what I I've that. watched throughout the day. Yeah, no, I'm I'm sure like like you said, it's more football. I would probably love it, but it's just like. Honestly, too, I'm, like, footballed out in some senses. Like, the Prem is so long. Champions League mm-hmm. is so long. And it's just like, then now I've got the Euros. and I'm, Blasphemy. I'm, I'm trying not to miss the Euros, but like you said, there's some games, like, we watch, like, uh, Spain-Georgia. It was yeah. like, even though Georgia got spanked, it was like, oh, what a great game for both. And then you just watch a smelly France-Belgium or Portugal-Slovakia. Uh, was it yeah. Slovakia? Okay, you, well, your boy. Smelly. Penaldo. Oh my god. What happened there, Justin? What happened? Dude, okay, you want me you want me to tell you what happened? Yeah. Brother is almost 40 years old <laughs> playing 90 plus minutes every other day. Yeah, man, it's a Roberto Martinez too afraid. He's too afraid to say, "Hey, I'm taking you off the team sheet for today." Listen, I want you to ask I'm really sorry. This. If they hired you, are you telling me that you would not be afraid to sit him? I would be afraid. I think the only See, I would do there's like three managers that could bench Ronaldo. Ancelotti, Jose, and Pep. Uh, and Maybe get Fer- away with Ferguson. It? And get away with it. And Alex oh, Ferguson. Okay. Those are the four managers that could bench Ronaldo. Get away with it. Fergie, Jose. Fer- yep. Pep. Carlo. <sighs> yeah, that might be. I don't even know if Carlo could get away with that. I think Carlo could. He'd just hand him a cigar after the win. Be like, look, <laughs> buddy, I told you it was going to work out. Jeez. Let yeah. Light you up real quick. Love it. Like I said, he's the GOAT. I love him. I always, always worship the ground that he's walked. But it's just like, bro, he's, he's fucking 40. You know, I said this when he was at United. You don't need to play 90 in, 90 out every game. You know what I mean? Be yeah. effective. Be a, be a sub. Come on, last 30 min- 20, 30 minutes of the game. Make a difference. Or start. So you can start one game. Sit, play 60 minutes, go off, let somebody else take it. And then on the next game, you come on the 30 minutes. Like, save your legs, be effective where you're where you're needed. When other teams are tired and all you got to do is jump inside the box and head it in. Yeah, and I'm going to play devil's advocate to my own point because in Qatar 2022, the game that he did not start against Morocco, yeah, he came Ramos. on later in the game. Like, if he had started that game, would he have made a difference? Would they possibly have met Argentina in the World Cup final. We don't know. I don't think so. I think we don't France know. was so good. Yeah. You know who can't hit a header though that Harry Kane. 
<laughs> Stinky. <laughs> and with that, before I get mad, I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna sign out of here. Guys, go down below, hit like, hit subscribe, send us a comment, tell us what you want us to talk about, tell us what you want us to rant about, tell us who you want us to call out, because we have no problem doing that. Colby, where can the people find you? You can find me at Kicking with Colbs on Instagram and on YouTube. You can find me at Texas Cleat Collector on Instagram and YouTube. And you can also find us at Bootcast Pod. And pro tip if you've made it in, or you know, top secret if you've made it in, I'm going to post a video tomorrow on what is it, July 2nd, 2024. Please tune into my Instagram because I think it might be the single greatest piece of content I've ever made. So tune in tomorrow. If you made it this far, there's your pro tip. There you and go, guys. That, we will see you guys next week. See you. Take care. Thank you, guys.